so this was supposed to be a review of uh, Brick Hat Mansion, the new uh, Paul Walker film that just came out this week. As you can possibly read by the title down below, that's not the case anymore. You see, the what happened was I had intended to go see Brick Mansion. However, the only pre screening they had was at 8 o'clock, and I got to work at 9. So, damn. All right, well, I got to review something this week. What we got available? Uh, we got the other girls. Nah, I don't want to fucking see a chick fuck on myself. Uh, we got quiet ones. Eh, horror's not really my wheelhouse. Wouldn't be that entertaining a review. Haunted House 2. Fuck. One for Haunted House 2. And here we are. Okay. I'm not going to say this is the worst goddamn movie I've seen, but this was, this was a hard sit. Um, fuck, what can I, well, let me start with the decline of the scary movies real quickly, shall I say. I actually like the first two scary movies, actually the first three scary movies, I like those a lot, I own the first two, um, the first one I don't think is quite as funny enough to own, but I like the first one enough. Then the fourth one came. I actually did see that one in the theaters. I regret seeing that one in theaters. Uh, <laughs> and then the fifth one, I didn't even fucking try to see. So, yeah. Then all the uh, fucking sm spoof movies that have been done by the people who have made Scary Movie. Uh, like Epic Movie, Disaster Movie, Date Movie. I saw just about all of those in theaters when I was younger and had a less uh, sense of quality of film. <laughs> Uh, of all of it, I like I like the um, superhero movie. Okay, superhero isn't ma is stupid, but it's not in the same wheelhouse as stupid as those ones are. So that one's actually all right. Um, but yeah, the decline of the scary movie spoof movie franchise. Here it started scary movie and just went. <laughs> and uh, haunted house. And then, uh, as you can t tell, this is haunted house too, which is a sequel to the original haunted house, which I did not see. But apparently did well enough. I think it was like on a budget of like three million dollars, maybe like ninety million dollars. So, yeah, you're gonna make a sequel to it. Um, plot? It's spoofing all the fucking like paranormal activity, supernatural shit that's been happening lately. Uh, uh it's take off. Um, starts off right. At the, I'm assuming uh, the way it's set up, it takes place right at the end of uh the first one, which is I believe a um take-up of The Devil Inside, which anyone who's actually sw seen that movie, you know how that movie ended. It didn't end. That's how bad that fucking ending was, apparently. It did not end. You had to go on a website to find out how that movie ended. Uh, but no, it picks up apparently right where they left off, and uh, Marlon Wayne, I believe it's Marlon Wayne, um, is playing the same character he did, but you know, he's got like a different girlfriend who's um, uh, Jamie, Jamie Presley, I think it is. I believe that I said I could be on. She was uh, my name is Earl. Um, yeah, she's his girlfriend, and she move into the house, and strange shit starts happening again. Uh, the big spoofs they're doing in this one are uh, the Conjuring with like the Annabelle doll, uh, and still the paranormal activities with the damn cameras. Uh, Last Exorcist, uh, Sinister is another one they uh, one of the big ones they do, and a few other nods to a few other more obscure horror movies. Um. I can't say that it was god-awful, because I'll admit, I actually laughed at a few parts. Mostly hanging around Gabriel Iglesias, because he's the only one... Because he's the only one who's actually pretty decent in the movie, consistency-wise, uh, but... That's not saying a lot. <laughs> saying Gabriel Iglesias is the best part of this movie. It's like saying Anthony Hopkins is the best part of whatever fucking movie he's in. Yeah, he's funny. Yeah, he's a good actor in Anthony Hopkins' case. This doesn't make the movie good. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, he's got some decent lines. I like to think of it like he's doing his stand-up routine, and I'm just envisioning, envisioning how that's working in the context of the film. And in that way, it's funny. Uh, there's a few scenes where, um, some of the, like, uh, slapstick's kind of funny. Like, there's a scene where he's in the beginning where his dog is crushed by his safe, which I assume is a takeoff of The Conjuring, because the dog died in that one. If you haven't seen The Conjuring yet, spoiler. Uh... <laughs> 
But on the whole... So, like I said, I laughed a few times, but the biggest fucking problem is... Well, one of the biggest fucking problems is... Um, they just keep running a joke. They keep trying to beat you in the face with a joke so you laugh eventually at just how fucking awkward the joke is getting. Like, uh, okay, the dog dying scene is a perfect example. For, like, first 30 seconds, that was actually kind of funny. I'm like, I was like, oh, God. <laughs> and then it just, like, keeps going on. And Marlon Wayne just keeps overreacting. And it just keeps fucking going and going and going and going going oh christ uh there's a scene where he it, a good example there's a scene where they're doing an exorcism and he, they just keep fucking bantering back and forth on unfunny banter to anyone who doesn't find like just random black humor funny and that's a it's, it's not a big complaint. I don't mind racist humor. I mean, I'm, I'm white, but fuck it. I'll, I'll, I'll tell a racist joke now and then. Not because I'm racist, but because racist jokes are funny sometimes. That's just the way it is. If you don't think that way, oh well. I'm, I'm sorry if you don't think that way. I'm not going to harsh on you if you don't find racism funny. Racism can be funny sometimes. But they're just going for the cheap shot racism jokes, like brother likes white girls with big butts. Uh, he's an N-word a lot. Hey, cuz! No, hey, cuz! I hear this, cuz! Oh, that character... Okay, um, I can't remember the, I don't know the actor's name, he might be another of the Waynes brothers. He was in the first movie, you probably, if you did see the first movie, you probably recognize him, he's like his cousin, and he's the one who, he's the one who's talking like this, cousin, and, oh, oh, cousin, we gotta get, oh, hell no, dog! God, fuck, I'm glad he was, he was only in the beginning and the end, thank Christ. Oh, God. That was the biggest problem. The more I watched this movie, the more I just didn't fucking care. That was the biggest problem with me. I didn't care with this movie after a while. A few times I laughed, but I didn't care after that, because they just kept going and fucking going. And none of it's really funny. Okay, I'll say this. They make a good uh, little shot at the scary movies. Um, in a scene where uh, Marlon went spoofing a sinister, uh, the uh, Ethan Hawke movie. He's being the Ethan Hawke character where he's like writing down his thoughts and he hears in her monologue and he makes a few cute little quips. And at one point, just like... When are they going to start making scary movies, stop making scary movies without the Waynes Brothers? I mean, seriously, they fucking suck, dude. I'm like, I can't argue with that. That's really true. <laughs> they make, the scary movies without the Waylon Brothers really do suck. I mean, no one actually, I think, was god-awful in the movie. Um, Jane Presley was all right. She's just playing the dumb girlfriend. Um, you know what? Marlon Wayne, for what it's worth... Actually was not bad. He was just really trying to get people to fucking laugh at him. But I'll give him credit. He seemed to be actually enjoying himself. It seemed to be his kind of shtick that he's really come to like. Which I can respect that. That's perfectly fine. If it makes you money, by all means. Um, no, but... He's... He, he's... Overplays whatever... Th anything he's doing in this movie. Like, the dog dies. He just starts acting like a fucking child. Um, he's, when he's freaking out about the ghost, he's freaking out like a fucking child. He's being a big fucking baby in this movie. And while it's kind of amusing, it's really grating and really annoying. And then there's humor in this movie where I'm like, I, I'm, no, literally, there's a scene in this movie, and I'll just, just say it in just a moment, but my face in this entire scene just start. I, I laughed a little bit because of where the scene started, but then, oh, excuse me, mm. breakfast. Uh, but then I'm like, I'm looking at the scene, I'm like, huh? What the fuck am I looking at? Seriously? Okay, if the scene is, if you know a Conjuring, which anyone who's watched, I hope you, uh, Conjuring's actually a really fucking good movie, I, I actually recommend The Conjuring. But if you have seen The Conjuring, there's, there's this do Annabelle doll, which is possessed and all that stuff, and... And they have an Annabelle doll in this. Well, Marlon Wayne comes in, and he sees the doll, and this is all on camera in the house. And it, 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 they don't explain the, the cameras. They always said you can't have enough too many cameras, so, uh, can't have too many cameras, so whatever. So you see the doll, and you see him, and the doll sitting on the bed, in the bedroom, and he's, like, home alone. So he sees the doll, and he starts flirting with the doll, and then it proceeds to him fucking the doll. 
And I'm not just saying, oh, 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 I love you. And just like a quick break. No, 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 no. He's flat out fucking fucking this doll. He's going down on the doll. He's giving the doll a rim job. He's having the doll give him a rim job. He's eating the doll out. She, the doll's blowing him. He's like, I assume he's doing fucking head in the ass. He's just going to town on this doll. It's a solid three minutes of him fucking the Annabelle doll. What the fuck? What the... Because I'm just looking at this like, am I watching this right now? I know people... I know there's a group of people who would find it funny, but... Really? Do they think the common public... I mean, I don't know if the common public is all for the Haunted House movies. If they are, society needs, society needs to rethink its priorities and its opinions. Uh, but, um, oh, oh, God, man. And then the Danimal Doll keeps coming back like it did in The Conjuring for a little bit. But it keeps coming back, I mean, not like a possessed being, but like a creepy stalker chick. So, and then it just, it, he, like, tries killing it, it doesn't work, and all that, and then, like, it calls the cops on him for, like, a spousal abuse kind of fucking charge. Oh, my God. Which, if you hadn't, like, shown that, like, three minutes stretch of them fucking, might have been a bit more humorous. But no. Because then he's, like, having a counseling session with the doll in himself on the fucking camera. But he's essentially just having it with himself. Because he's talking to himself. That was Mar that was these scenes with him. It was Marlon Wayne ad living the whole time. And you laugh a little bit, but probably because of how awkward it is. And that's that's where and, and besides the parts that actually kind of were funny, which were very far and few between, the only times you're really laughing in this is just about how fucking awkward it is. I mean, uh, Cedric the Entertainer shows back up. Um, he's Nah, I mean, I don't think Cedric Garrett here is unfunny. He wasn't overly funny in this. It, and then, you know what? That's one other problem I had. Some of the editing in this was really fucking weird. Like, really fu The scene where, uh, there's a scene, and it's, yeah, there's another scene where, um, my, I'm gonna call him Cousin Ray Ray, because I can't remember the actor's fucking name. His Cousin Ray Ray is, comes in at the very end, and Cedric Entertainer has this kind of scene, too, where, um, they just keep our uh, riffing and rifting. But it's not riffing. It's not. It's like they just get doing like 30 fucking takes and just edit it all together for him to keep talking shit. And it's the same with the Cousin Ray Ray as it is. They just get going and going. And it didn't seem coherent. It was because you could see where the cut was. It's like, oh, we're going to do this. Oh, we're going to do this. No, oh, no, no, hell no. no, no I, yeah, it was just very... I would say piss poor, because that editing has a place somewhere in the world, I assume. Uh, it did not work in here for me, not at all. I mean, all the other actors are alright. Um, I mean, again, I don't think anyone really was acting horribly, but it's a scary movie knockoff movie. <laughs> You're not looking for the Citizen Kane of roles here, folks. Um, like I said, Gabriel Glacey, he generally he's generally fine. I actually liked him in Magic Mike, too. Gabriel Glacey is a fucking hilarious man. I love Gabriel Glacey. And he, although his lines aren't overly funny, he sells them well enough that you laugh at Gabriel Glacey. That's pro again, that's not saying a lot. That's like saying Anthony Hopkins or Morgan Freeman is the best part of the movie that they're in. The movie can be shit, and they're still the best part of the movie they're in. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'll give her a rating on Facebook in a little while, but um, uh, my overall rating for this... Don't, I mean, if you like the first one, sure, go see it. If you like spoof movies, sure, go see it. Um, I give it maybe a 2 or 3 out of 10. I laughed a little bit. I liked Gabriel Glacey. But generally speaking, uh, if you actually like decent comedies, avoid this like the plague. Um, okay, uh, trailers I got on my stone and sticky notes again. Uh, so what did I get? I got, um, I got the, I actually, you know what, this was weird. I think it's because he was in the movie, but I got a trailer for a Gabriel Iglesias stand-up special. I mean, don't get me wrong, it looks, it looks funny as hell like all of his specials do, but I'm like, are they, like, doing stand-up specials in the theater now? Because it's kind of stupid, because he, no matter how long you have to wait, it's going to be on television at some point. Uh, fuck, you know what? I'd honestly see it in theaters, just because if there's nothing good playing. 
But again, there was nothing good playing that I hadn't already seen, and I saw this, so it's not saying much. I may have to see something else. Uh, I got the new Eli Roth film coming out called Into the Green Inferno, which... With, I don't know how this is being... It's being filmed like almost like an episode of River Monsters. It's about a... It's, you're going into the Amazon, these people find a cannibalistic tribe. It does not look great. It does not look that good, because frankly... First off, I'm not a huge Eli Roth fan. Um, I don't hate him to the degree that some other people do, but I'm not overly fond of him. I think he's a better actor than a director. Um, now, this is a shot like uh, Jeremy Wade should just show up randomly. And you, you see the trailer, and these guys are like sharding. Like, you hear a girl crying in the background. You see them basically about to eat the girl, or cut her, cut her up and eat her. Uh, and, and they make a disclaimer on the trailer. It's like, this tribe has never been filmed before. So this is supposed to be real footage. No, it's not. No, it's okay. I could tell you that tribe's probably been on camera before once. Hell, might have even been their episode of River Monsters for all I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really interested in that. Um, Hercules got the new uh, Rock Hercules trailer. It wasn't the new ones, the one that came out online, but I, the first time seeing it on the big screen, fuck yeah, I'm down for the Rock. It's Hercules, man. He's going through 13, I think it was the 13 layers. He's going through the labors. He's fighting the fucking lion. He's wearing the lion on his head. He's fighting the Hydra, the boar. He's got to clean out the stables. It's going to be a riveting couple of minutes of filming, cleaning out the horse stables. <laughs> Hell, nah, fuck it, man. He's The Rock. I like The Rock. I mean, he's not my favorite actor role, but he's funny as hell. He's got some good charisma to him. He's got some charm. He can be badass at points. So, yeah, I'm down for The Rock and Hercules, man. I'm going to be there. Uh, I got Million Ways to Die in the West. That one I am so fucking in for. Uh, Seth MacFarlane directing and starring. And essentially, it's a com comedic uh, Wild Wild West film. Uh, it's got him, Charlie Theron, uh, Amanda Siegfried, Neil Patrick Harris, Liam Neeson. I'm, uh, uh, I think it's uh, Paul Sorvini. Uh, I am so fucking down for this movie, man. Um, yeah, it's just people are always see so many people. Before you see the trail, people are dying constantly in the West. It's just the Wild West. It's the way it works. And Sick um, McFarland gets challenged, I think, at some point by Liam Neeson, who's like the best gunfighter in territory. And Liam Neeson. It's using his accent, which I find hilarious. Uh, Liam Neeson has like an uh, is Irish for anyone for you who don't know. I I love Liam Neeson. I'm sure a lot of people do. So it'd be a surprise if they didn't know that. But you can tell he's using his accent. I want to see Liam Neeson in more comedies, man. He's not in enough comedies. I mean, Lego Movie. I know he did one a while back where he was like, I think the plot was he was a cop with irritable bowel syndrome. I know that was a comedy. I hear that was actually kind of funny. I want to see him in more comedies. He would be so good as the straight man, but not completely the straight man. Because you can tell with Liam Neeson that he has fun with the film, and when he's having fun with the film, he's playing a straight man character, but at the same time, you can tell he's just kind of having a little fun with it, a little more fun than just being a straight man, and I love that. And Charlie Theron, she's gorgeous. She's funny. I love Charlie Theron in comedies also. Young adults not with Sam. My God. Please. You know what? I'll, I'll say this. If you want us to review young adults, we'll review it. But I, I would like it if you don't ask us to review because that means I have to watch it again. And that was one of the worst movie experiences in my life. Not because the audience is bad, because the movie... Oh my god, I hated that movie. It was something fierce. Oh. Semantics. Um, last trailer I got. Uh, Deliver Us from Evil. Uh, I don't know a bit too much about this. Ah, oh, crap. I can't... Well, my <laughs> Sorry, my phone just went off there. Uh... Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> but uh, Deliver Us Evil. I don't know too much about this. I don't know who directs it. or I'm, well, They probably said in the trailer. I just did not watch. I can't remember. It's not uh, Clive Owens who's in it. I want to say it's like... It's not Luke Wilson. I don't know. Uh, he's a. It's basically apparently based on true events from an NYPD uh, detective. Um, it's basically a cop who... They explain it. There's two types of evil. The secondary evil, which is basically the evil of men. And the primary evil, which is the devil and evil demons and stuff like that. And the guy doesn't believe in primary evil. Well, then, um, some creepy stuff goes down in his home. And, you know, obviously, he's gonna start believing in primary evil by the end of the movie. And I'll give it this. The trailer's really fucking creepy for that movie. Uh, it's got, it's got a really quiet tone to it. And that's what really fuck. I'll admit, I was kind of creeped out. I'm like, okay, uh, where's the jump scare gonna come out in this? Where's the jump scare gonna come out in this? Oh, 
Okay, no jump. That, that doesn't seem right. Oh, there's the jump scare. Okay, yeah. I get the heart pumping a little bit. Uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it does look, again, horror's not my wheelhouse. If, I, if anything, I like monster movies. That's my wheelhouse of horror movies. I'm not big on the slasher or supernatural films. I'll go see one now and then, like I saw The Conjuring, and I really liked it. Uh, but uh, generally speaking, I don't go in for the horror movies. But yeah, so that's uh, Haunted House 2. Uh, next week should be Spider-Man 2, so that'll be fucking awesome. Uh, it's either going to be me, Mark, and Sam, or just me and my own again. But uh, yeah, so thanks for uh, watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, and as always, if you've got something you want us to review, be it movie, media, game, any, any sort of social media, really. Uh, games, music, uh, movies, TV, whatever. Uh, put it in the comments below, or you know, Facebook me or something like that. Um, because Brent Fish, you can find my Facebook pretty easy. Um, and we'll do a review on it at some point. So thanks again, and I'll see you for the next one.